Deandra, first off, how are you? We're about a month out since you were hospitalized for COVID. How are you doing? Yes, I'm doing much better. Thank you, Bryce, for asking. I'm glad to be on the other side of it for sure. I'm, you know, back to almost, almost back to my old self. <laughs> That's very good to hear. All right. Well, we are in the thick of season five. How are you feeling about this season? I'm feeling good. I'm excited to tell a different story with a different, um, shows a different side of my personality, shows my ability to be compassionate because a lot of people are, you know, wondering if I had the ability to be compassionate for years. So they'll see that. I think this season of RHOD, you've got just every element of great storytelling because we were forced to be very introspective. You're at home, you're dealing with all these things and you got a camera in your face, which that also makes for really interesting TV because you can't run, you can't hide this year. <laughs> it seems that removing one element from the show, from the group, Leanne Locken, maybe freed you up in a sense. Do you feel like that? Yes, it definitely freed me up. I think the way I handled maybe some of the situations with Leanne, if I look back, I would have handled them differently. I would have come and said, you hurt my feelings when you talked about the situation with my finances because I was trying to save my business instead of being so angry. But I was just in a state of shock back then. This year I get to talk about other things than you know Leanne and I not getting along, which is great. And I think right. fighting. Do you have any sort of relationship with her anymore or is it kind of... We've parted ways, wish her the best on her journey. Uh, I do not have a relationship with her. We do not see eye to eye on several things and the social media got so out of hand that I just can't go back to a friendship when things were said about me that were complete lies. And it's not that I can't forgive because I have to forgive, but it's just why go back and take a chance. I wish her well. I'm so glad that she and Rich are happy and that she's got other things she's doing in her life and um, just happy for all of her endeavors. I like it. Very diplomatic. Uh, Dr. Tiffany Moon, yes. we all have to thank you for bringing this woman into our lives, into our homes. I mean, the fan response has been wild. Were you expecting the audience to respond to Tiffany in the way that they have? I knew that she would be well liked because she has a wonderful personality. Um, she's very opinionated. She has that je ne sais quoi. She's just the whole package. Yeah, like I said, the audience has fallen in love with her. It seems like some of the women, uh, at least not what we've seen yet, <laughs> they did not fall in love with Tiffany. Why do you think that is? I don't know, Bryce. And it's interesting to see when we get to reunion, what people say, because I will be interested to see what happens there. I really don't know what the issue is. I think that she has had a huge splash and I think that's a part of it. And whereas I look at it and I'm like, big win, people are paying attention to RHOT. This is amazing. You know, it's like, great. We've got this new housewife that's bringing all this attention and people are really noticing our franchise and they're seeing what we can bring to the table. And for me, I'm thinking this is the best thing ever. And I keep calling them like, oh my God, girl, you are winning. You are doing great. Thank you so much, you know? And I can understand that where people would think maybe there was a little jealousy or a little bit, um, you know, not what they expected, I guess. People don't like change. That's, that's the big lesson is I think people don't like change. We also have another newbie this year, Jen Davis. There were rumors that you two had some sort of like knockout, drag out, fight. Uh, did you and will we see that? I don't, you know, if you didn't see it, it didn't happen. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <I'll be laughs> if okay. you didn't see it, it wasn't there. <laughs> uh, now, last year you introduced Carrie Brittingham to this group. Yes. Something seems to have shifted between seasons four and five between <sighs> the two of you. What changed? Why has this friendship started to fizzle, it seems? Yeah, Bryce, I am still confused about that, to be honest. Um, I didn't understand that Carrie had such deep-seated opinions and feelings about our friendship until I started watching the season. <laughs> I mean, I knew we were fighting a lot um, on, you know, during filming, but I never ever would have thought that she would have called me selfish or that I wasn't a good friend or any of the things that she's saying about me. And it really hurt my feelings. Um, and I really have tried to get to the bottom of it with her and you'll see that kind of unpack and unfold. But I don't know, there's a bee in her bonnet as we like to say in the South and I don't know what set it off. It does look like there's an emotional moment where you sit face to face with her and mm -hmm. open up to her. It may not be the type of friend that you expect, 
but I'm doing the best I can. What leads us to that moment? After hearing um, a lot about what she's going through and the different struggles she's had, I thought, well, maybe I should be a little more compassionate or a little more understanding. And that's really my journey this year anyway. So I, I really sat with Darren, my shaman, and talked through it with him and how could I, you know, maybe kind of change change the way she reacted to me by not being so reactionary to her, by kind of like catching her off guard with being the person to come to the table and say, okay, I'm sorry if I haven't been a good friend, but let's figure this out and let me try to be a better friend. Got it. The shaman, you are on this journey with him, mm -hmm. it seems. But why was he sucking a booger out of your nose, Deandra? sucking anything out of my nose. It is so funny that people think he was sucking. He was blowing, it's an Amazonian sacred tobacco into my nose. <laughs> and so it gives you kind of a euphoric light feeling. It makes you relax and calm down and de-stress. And it's a very nice kind of, you know, zen moment. Okay, so I think it was maybe a, an added sound effect there that yeah. gave people the idea <laughs> that he was sucking it out. I, who would want to suck a booger? Oh, God, no. Well, that's what I was you. like, what journey no. is this? But the shaman is helping you figure out kind of this struggle you're having with the other half of your family, half-brother, stepmother. Um, will, will we see a, a conclusion to that journey or are you still on it? Um, you kind of will see... Um... I can't really answer that question. It's kind of a, an ongoing story. Will we see them at all? Your stepmother, half -brother. I can't tell you that. Oh my gosh. How, you are going to get me in so much trouble. <laughs> I think we can read between the lines there, though. Uh, <laughs> there is still a lot of season left to yes. watch. Uh, what are you most excited for the fans to get to see in season five? Well, they'll see a lot of drama again from me and conflict. But I think as you noted with Carrie, you'll see how I uh, resolve that conflict, which is, I believe in my heart, different than in prior seasons. And that is the beauty of this process and being on this journey every year is that you get to do it all over again and have a redo and show a different side of yourself if you want to. And this year for me, um, when the camera started rolling is when my stepmother had reached out to me that first week. That's why we told that story. I wasn't. And I mean, I had been thinking about it for a long time, but I really wasn't kind of prepped and ready. And I said, I remember I said I've got, to my husband, I said, I've got to tell this story. It's happening right now. He said, are you sure you want to do this? I said, yes, because this is what's really going on in my life. And this is a reality show. And so I'm very happy that we're able to tell that story. I love it. You, It's kind of flipping the negative into a positive. I yeah. asked you what you're most looking forward to, and you said the hard parts, it sounds like. The hard parts, exactly, because those are the times of growth for me personally. And um, you're going to see kind of a more, more vulnerable, definitely more vulnerable uh, side than you've ever seen before. I'm excited. Um, your tagline, mm -hmm. your your reading of your tagline cracks oh, my Lord, every yes. week. <laughs> oh, me too. Dallas girls are sugar and spice, but I'm still working on nice. Every time I listen, I'm like, oh, when did my voice get that low? <laughs> It sounds like you used to go like a big drag of a cigarette and you're like, let me tell you. It's <laughs> I know, it does. Oh my gosh, I don't know what happened. I didn't even know that my voice was that low, that register. <laughs> so it was kind of, it was a shock to me too, but I had several, I think, reads of that line and um, you know, that's the one they chose. And it certainly surprised people. They're like, wait, what is that? Jealous girls are shooting <laughs> spice and um, still working at nice. <laughs> it brings me joy every episode. Though, I love so. it. I love that you like it. <laughs>